Small business owners have so much to be worried about these days, and one of those challenges is putting their children through college. Earlier, we spoke with Barry Moltz, a consultant to small businesses, for some strategies to reduce college tuition. You're kind of speaking from a personal situation. What is the predicament that you're in? Well, my son goes to college in a year, and of course, like most families, we've spent most of our lives saving for college. And of course, with the Great Recession, we lost 35% of that savings. Mm -hmm. I keep telling my son that he used to have four years of college saved, but now he's only got two and a half. Okay, so what exactly is your goal? Is it to get your child to qualify for as many student loans as possible? Yeah, the, any way that we can reduce the amount that we have to contribute, that's more money that we can put towards our retirement. You see, they give out loans for college, but they don't give out loans to support retirement. Right. So then how can you reduce that, what is it's called, expected family contribution, right? Right, the EFC. It's a combination of your assets and also your income. So you need to put those things in protected places where the EFC can't get it. For example, in life insurance policy, in equity in your main home, mm -hmm. to take money out of your kids' names because they count 20% towards of their money mm -hmm. towards the EFC and only 5% of your money towards that. So there are certain strategies similar to tax planning that you can do. Okay, so talk more about these different strategies. I mean, let's take one for example, getting uh, putting more of your money into your retirement plan. Is flush that up for us. Well, the more money you can put into your retirement plan isn't going to count towards the 5.5% that the EFC formula counts. So mm -hmm. if you can take money from your savings account legally put into various retirement accounts, then that's really the way you should go, not only for you, but for your spouse. Okay, now what about the, the accounts that the kids have in their names? I remember when I was a kid, my dad did open an account for me. Right. So it was only in my name, but that's not such a good idea when your child's going to college. Well, when you have a 529 account, those are good ideas because those really are for colleges, but if they have a lot of money in their own name, the way the formula works is they'll count 20% of that as the contribution if it's in their name versus 5% if it's in your name. Okay, now life insurance policies, there's so many out there. Right. Which ones would you want to get involved in yourself? Well, we're talking about whole life or something that has, or permanent life insurance that has an annuity, those that have a cash value to it. If you contribute to a life insurance policy for roughly 10 years, the amount of money you put in is, more, is less than what the value is, so that's a good way to stash your assets, and again, it's not counted for the EFC. Providing that the insurance company doesn't go bankrupt. Right, you have to <laughs> choose a, a good company for sure, and also, you also get insurance out of it as well. Exactly. Okay, so why is this so important? I mean, why do you want to get the most out of the student loans availability? It's a good question. Most of us, who, <clears throat> a lot of us who are having children right now are actually older. I've just turned 50, so now I'm starting to plan for my retirement. And every dollar that I use to pay for my son's college education, it's a dollar less that I'm going to have mm -hmm. to retire on. So if I can reduce that, We'll have more money to retire, and I think that's important. Okay, so do you feel like you're on the track to accomplishing this? I feel that we're on the track to accomplishing it. It's just really sad that in America that we're really pressed with the idea that we have to pay $250,000 for a private education, or in other countries like Asia and Europe, they don't do nearly as much as that. So it's a big burden on, on American families. Considering in this economy when kids are graduating from school, the jobs really aren't there, and to be saddled with tens of thousands of dollars in, of debt really is just not a very good situation to be in. It's difficult. They say that over someone who goes to college over their lifetime, they learn an average of $1 million. Mm -hmm. Well, if it costs $250,000 now to go to college, if you present value that back, it doesn't seem like such a clear-cut financial deal. Our thanks to Barry Moltz. He writes about many issues affecting small business owners. You can find more on his website at barrymoltz.com.